Timber drawings can be quite complex as there's many different varieties and ways it can be shown, but they all extend from a simple principle. And I'll break this down to make sure that you understand how to read your timber documentation. My name is Brendan, your structural engineer. Now let's get into it. Let's look at the framing of a simple timber framed house. So we're looking at the drawings here. We can see that we've got a building extension. So we've got an extension out the front and out the back. So we can see the hashing internally showing the existing walls, which are shaded gray and also hashing the existing building that we're not really touching. So it's to remain as documented. We've also hashed the external areas as these need to be slightly treated in the internal areas. As we can also see that the deck framing is slightly different. So external, we're using an F7 treated pine. While internally, we can see that we're showing an MGP10 timber, which is generally slightly better and slightly cheaper. However, it's more for those internal uses. So on the notes, we're showing that we've got stumps here. So they're just really a post in the ground with bearers and joists. So our joists and bearers in this location are an F17, which is a hardwood. On this note, we can see we've got the centers of the joists. We've got the centers of the bearers and the locations of our stumps. We can also see that we've got additional DS notations on our drawings or P1 notations. So DS, is documented for a double stud. So for whatever reason, you've got additional load in that location. So you've got additional point load that you need to deal with through a double stud. And a P1 is typically noted as a post as that's an external edge. It doesn't have any framing around it. It's just really there to support the roof structure over. Timber framing can be quite complex. So don't forget to nail down that like button. Another thing you can see on this plan as well as we're trying to maintain the same pitch of each of these rafters. We've also got saddle trusses on this documentation. So what a saddle truss is, so you've got your general roof truss, which will be sit there and pitching, and a saddle truss will sit on top of that. To allow for a roof pitch change, typically you'll keep the same rafter falling through, but then put a saddle truss on top of it to allow for that minor change in pitch of the roof, as this allows for more efficiency, as efficiency really lies in replication. So the more replication you have in your drawing, typically the cheaper it will be. Other notations on this drawing, so we've got our roof beams. We've also got our external veranda beams. So they're called a PB1, so typically they're just going between the posts. So generally a lintel is built into the stud framing, so an RL1 lintel. Then if we move around the outer edge, we've also got our LED ones. It's, it's short for ledger, which is generally you build your stud framing up and you build the ledger beside it. So you're bolting into the stud framing. On this plan as well, we're obviously notating any sections that they may need to help with that documentation. So let's go to a slightly more complex build where we've got three stories of construction. We'll start off with the roof plan. Now this roof plan is more complex than the previous drawing that we were just looking at. On these drawings, we've got beams that are notated as RBs, so roof beams. So we're varying between steel beams and timber construction on this building. The other thing to note as well, as opposed to the double studs we were just talking about earlier, we now have C1. So typically a C1 is a steel column. And the other one to note as well, we've got SC1. So that's actually a stub column. As it doesn't go full depth, a column will go from the roof structure to the floor below. A stub column only goes for a certain portion as potentially you've got a step change in the roof. So you need the stub column to make up the difference in that step change. On this roof structure, we're gonna see we've got more complex. We've also got a circular roof deck. That's where we've hashed on the documentation and hence we've got our FJ1. So an FJ1 is a floor joist. So the difference between FJ1, it supports more load. So typically a heavier section as opposed to the other ones, which we've got P1s, which is purlins. So a purlin typically runs parallel to the fall of the roof. So the purlin will be flat, but the roof structure will fall away from it. We can also see at the top corner, we've also got an R1, which is a rafter, which generally runs with the fall of the roof. So it will change from the height from one location to the other as it's falling with the pitch of the roof. But again, there are just certain centers. So there are certain centers to allow for the support of any roof structure above it. Well, also you can see that we're notating what the roof bracing throughout the building, pulling the load back to where the horizontal loads can be supported. So we do this through a number of ways, but typically it's a cross bracing location. On this plan again, we can see we've got our ledges that we're calling up here. Then if we move down one floor, so now we've got our first floor joist and we can see we've got a series of different notations on this drawing. So we've got FB1 to try and tell the difference between a roof beam or a floor beam as they have slightly different functionalities. We're calling up FB1s as a floor beam. So again, they're just a series of timber framing or steel framing. Typically you'll keep steel with steel. However, steel can support timber, but typically you won't support timber off steel. On this plan, you can also see that we've got wall braces. So we've got WB1s, which are typically shown with a dash line and a wall brace, which is a cross brace in the roof structure. And that's to support any of the lateral loads on the building. If you're interested in supporting the channel, I've got links to my Patreon in the below description. The framing of timber frame structures can be quite complex. And without the support of my patrons I got listed off the side here, this type of content may not be possible. And as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye.